Hello, welcome to another video on Cilium. Right, before we dive into what we're going to see today, I just want to quickly recap what we did in my previous video. Right, so the previous video was about Hubble CLI. We followed this documentation, setting up Hubble observability. We installed uh, Hubble, we enabled Hubble using this command, Cilium Hubble enable. We downloaded the Hubble client and then we validated the Hubble API access by running this command and then running the Hubble status. And then we also saw a couple of uh, Hubble observe commands to see how you know the network flows between different services. So that's what we saw in the previous video. So I have the setup still from my previous video, so it's all the same. So if I do kubectl get pods, and we have all the uh, services for the Star Wars demo, uh, that we are using for uh, throughout the series. And so Death Star Service, Death Star Pod, TIE Fighter Pod, X-Wing Pod, and so on. And you can go to Cilium status. And you can see Cilium is okay. Cilium operator is okay. And we have enabled Hubble. You can see Hubble relay is showing us okay. And we have the Hubble relay pod, Cilium operator, Cilium. And everything is looking good. If I do which Hubble, we have Hubble. And then, what we did was uh, Hubble status, and we checked that the Hubble API is actually working fine, and then we did Hubble observe. So that's showing us the network flow um, happening in our cluster, and then we saw a couple of variations uh, of the Hubble observe command, like, uh, you know, this one is filtering by uh, traffic destined to the dead star pod, and we're only looking at the dropped packets, dropped network packets, um, and then dead star, and we are restricting the uh, traffic flows to just protocol HTTP. So we saw how to use Hubble CLI from the command line, all right? So this is where we left in our previous video. And in today's video, what we're gonna see is the other side of the Hubble uh, observability platform, which is the UI. Um, so if you're comfortable with CLI, so it gives you all the details that you want. So there's nothing that's uh, shown in the UI is not in the CLI or the other way around. So anything you see in the CLI is also, you can see all those details in the web UI. So today's video is about how to enable web UI and how to access the Hubble web UI and see different things like the traffic flows, packets and everything. What we saw using Hubble CLI, we're going to see the same information, same level of details using Hubble UI. All right, so for that, we're going to go in here. So this is the documentation we followed in the last video. If we go to the end of it, so inspecting network flows with CLI, which again, we um, went through in the last video. So this video is about the Hubble UI. So let's go in there. So this is the, the UI that you will see once we deploy or enable the Hubble UI. So in order to enable the Hubble UI, what we are going to do is just run this command Cilium Hubble enable dash dash UI. So let's copy that, paste it. Okay, and if I do Cilium status dash dash wait, and it's just going to start a pod and it's now running. And you can see here the container is the Hubble UI and it should be running. The Hubble UI is there. Right, so if I do kubectl get pods dash a and you will see the Hubble UI pod here. All right, so we have the Hubble UI running and how do we access it? So let's go back to the documentation. To open the Hubble UI, all we have to do is Cilium Hubble UI. Okay, so things to note here. So Cilium Hubble UI by default, when you run this, it's going to open up a web browser, the default web browser that you have in your system. And it runs on port 12,000 on the server, on the uh, server where you're running your Kubernetes cluster. So if you're running this on your laptop, Cilium Hubble UI, say for example, you run Cilium Hubble UI, and that will open a web browser and it will load the Hubble web interface, all right? But in my case, it's going to be slightly different. So if I do minus minus help, and I'm going to use this option here. By default, it uses port 12,000, so I don't have any problems with that. So I'm gonna leave that as default. I'm gonna use this option, minus minus open browser equals false because I don't want the browser to be opened. Um, if you remember, my setup is quite different. So uh, this server where I'm typing all these Kubernetes commands is on a server, it's not on my laptop. So I've got a diagram to show you how my setup looks like. 
So this is my laptop currently. I'm recording this whole video on this laptop. And from my laptop, I have logged into my Arch Linux server using SSH. And that's the terminal that you're seeing. So this is the terminal inside my server. And I've, uh, I'm running the Kubernetes cluster inside my server. So this Kubernetes cluster, uh, the nodes of this Kubernetes cluster are all uh, libvirt KVM VMs, virtual machines. So this is Arch Linux. And the laptop is also Arch Linux. 8 CPU, 16 gig of RAM, and the server is 16 CPU, 32 gig of RAM. So I could have done everything in my laptop itself, but I just want to keep uh, the resources free for recording. So that's why, and I also have the server lying around with 16 CPU, 32 gig. I'm not actually using that. So uh, I just thought we could use that for Kubernetes cluster and this one for recording. So because my setup looks like this, and if I run Cilium Hubble UI, right? Cilium Hubble UI, what it does is without minus minus open browser, by default it's going to open up a browser because the default is true. And what it will do is it will try to open up the browser in here, but I'm remotely logged into the server. But if it if it tries to, you know, it tries to open the browser in the server, which you can't see from your laptop. So what, what what's the way to do is to use SSH forwarding so that um, the browser uh, that's open here you can view actually from your laptop okay so it, it's not that complicated let me show you in the next diagram here what I'm actually doing so I'm going to run this SSH command from my laptop to the server so what this actually means is I am enabling an SSH tunnel session and on the laptop side any traffic that I send to port 8000 will be sent through this tunnel to the port 12,000 on the server and the response will be back coming back through the SSH channel. So it's just SSH port forwarding if, you, if you've if you already used it. So uh, for my laptop, so that I can actually browse localhost 8,000 on my laptop and it sends the data to the server and gets the response back so I can see everything on my laptop as if it's actually running on my laptop, all right? But instead, the process is actually running in the server on the localhost 12,000 port, okay? So let's do that. So I'm going to say open browser equals false. Right, so that's running now. So the way to access this, I'm going to open up another terminal. And in here, I'm going to run this command SSH minus L. So this command that I'm running here, I'm actually running from my laptop terminal, but I'm going to SSH into my Arch Linux server. And I'm going to forward anything that's coming on to the port 8000 on my laptop to the port 12,000 on the server, okay. So that's done, and if I do netstat-nltp, grep for 12,000, you can see uh, the process, the kubectl port forwarding is run on, uh, is running on port 12,000 on localhost, okay. So that's there, um, okay. And now, if I open localhost, so I'm typing this localhost, and this is my web browser, and I'm opening localhost colon, 12,000, not 12,000, localhost colon 8,000, right? So this localhost is my laptop here and I'm accessing port 8,000 on my laptop and which is going to forward the traffic to 12,000 on the server and get the response back so we can see the uh, Hubble UI on my laptop's web browser, if it makes sense, okay? So let's go to localhost colon 8,000 and there we go. So that's our Hubble UI. Okay, so it starts by asking you to choose the namespace, okay, to find, to filter the traffic on a particular namespace. So let's go with cube system. Okay, so it's trying to find uh, the maps and everything. And on the bottom here, you see the source identity, destination identity from where the traffic is flowing to where and the destination port, whether it's layer seven. And if you click on one of these things, you will see more detailed information here. So you can find out which way the um, traffic is flowing, whether it's ingress traffic or egress traffic, um, what's the verdict, what's the timestamp, TCP flag, source pod, source identity, source label, source IP, you get all these information here, which protocol, destination IP, and so on for each of these entries. And in here, you can see the direction of the traffic. So from Hubble UI, so we are actually accessing the Hubble UI, which is sending the traffic to the Hubble Relay. So Hubble Relay is the one that collects all the information from all the Cilium agent in our Kubernetes nodes. And we see these information here. Okay, and if you click on any of these um, 
boxes you will see more details so i clicked on humble ui it shows me all the labels attached and if i do the same here you can see here and on the top you can zoom in zoom out okay uh, and i can actually filter everything here so at the moment you can there's no filter it just shows everything and you can type the filter here you can include label dns identity pod name and everything and here you can filter by verdict so at the moment we only have all forwarded verdicts so if i choose drop there is nothing there so let's go back to any verdict okay so that's cube system um so let's go to the default where we have our star wars demo at the moment i don't see any uh, diagrams any visualizations here because we haven't generated any traffic yet okay so let's generate some traffic so for that i'm going to go to the documentation and if i go to the star wars demo getting started with star wars demo so if you remember the video before the last video we looked at the star wars demo uh sorry it was about the cilium network policies where we discussed this setup here and we enabled a couple of cilium network policies so that um, so after enabling the two Cilium network policies, what we achieved in that video was the X-Wing pod should not be able to communicate with the Death Star service, while the TIE Fighter pod can communicate with the Death Star service, but only post request is allowed. The put request is going to be denied. Okay, so let's do some testing here. So the first command here we are going to run is sending traffic from the TIE Fighter pod to the Death Star service uh, using the curl command, we are sending the post request. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, ship landed. All right, so now if I go back to the Hubble UI, I can see that I can see that visually. Okay, so that's from the TIE Fighter pod to the Death Star pod, and you can see it's the post request um, verdict is forwarded, ingress traffic, source pod, type is TIE Fighter, all the labels, source IP, destination IP, um, it's on port 80. And you can see the same thing here as well 80 and you can see uh, it's a post request and the path as well so where we are sending the request to it's to slash v1 request landing and that's the time fighter part okay so you see details here so let's go back to the documentation and run the next command which is the put command okay so copy that paste it here and we get access denied and back in the hubble ui we should see if i refresh the page yes so now you see the red dashed lines here and you can see the dropped verdict and to from tie fighter to the dead star you're sending put request uh, to the path v1 exhaust port but it was dropped and if i click on that you see all the details here but it says uh, drop reason is unknown drop reason that's fine because we know we enable the cilium network policy that doesn't allow traffic put request from the tie fighter part to the death star service okay so i can click on there i can click on the death star service so we can see where exactly it's failing so it's sending request to port 80 the sending put request and the post request post request is fine but the put request has got some problem because you see the red line there so that's tie fighter to the dead star service what about the other one what about the x-wing pod to the dead star service which is completely blocked okay let's try to run a command x-wing kubectl exec x-wing so that will try to send a post request to the dead star service and it will be blocked and it's gonna hang because we have a policy that doesn't allow traffic from x-wing to desktop service so control c and now we should see some traffic visualization in the humble ui and you can see it's x-wing and there's a problem with x-wing okay and in here you can see all the dropped packets and on the visualization uh, the more services you have the more visualization you will see in this page but now we only have um, one application deployed and uh, if I choose verdict I, if, I, if I only want to see the dropped verdict I can do that and so that one is the TIE fighter pod put request and this one is the x-wing pod okay so I can close that all right so that is it for this video I will see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye